On today's show, the European auto industry is starting to recover. GM's new mid-size pickups fail to put a dent in the Toyota Tacoma. And who knew luxury armored vehicles are in such big demand? All that and more coming right up on Auto Line Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for September 8th of 2015. Well, it's been a long time coming, but the European auto industry is starting to stage a comeback. Last month, sales in Western Europe grew by a strong 10%, with Spain and Italy growing even stronger than that. Those markets were especially hard hit since the start of the Great Recession. Even so, the European market has a long way to achieve a full recovery. Last year, sales hit 18.3 million units, including medium and heavy-duty trucks and buses. This year, they could top 19 million, but that's still more than 3 million fewer vehicles than were sold in 2007, when total sales topped 22.4 million vehicles. Mahindra is not a well-known name in the American market. The Indian manufacturer is best known for its farm tractors, but you're going to want to keep an eye on this company. Over the past few years, the company started to expand its global reach. In 2011, it bought South Korean SUV maker Sang Young. Last year, it acquired a controlling stake in the scooter unit of Peugeot. And now Mahindra is closing in on a deal to purchase Italian car designer Pininfarina. The two companies started talks back in March, but negotiations stalled because Pininfarina's creditor banks didn't accept the deal. Now a deal could be completed in the next few days. We'll be back to talk about armor plating right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. When I think of armored vehicles, my mind goes to some specialty shop upfitting Cadillacs and Suburbans. But for the first time, Land Rover is producing them in-house. Engineered by its Special Vehicle Operations Division, the automaker is turning out an armored vehicle based on the Range Rover autobiography called the Sentinel. At its core is a six-piece armored passenger cell with thick multi-laminated glass. The end result is a vehicle that can withstand shots from armor-piercing bullets, TNT blasts, and grenade explosions from under the floor or above the roof. If you're in the need of some protection, get ready to shell out just under $450,000 for the Sentinel. Speaking of armored vehicles, Audi has once again made its security sedan, the A8L Security, even more robust. It integrates more resistant materials that not only offer more protection, but also lowers the overall weight of the vehicle. The security is now certified to the requirements of resistance class VR9, which is currently the most stringent requirements for civilian high security sedans. It looks like there may be a growing need for armored vehicles, and the people that need them seem to want to ride around in style. While General Motors surprised the rest of the industry when it came out with smaller pickup trucks, the Chevrolet Colorado, and GMC Canyon, and those trucks are selling pretty well. They're on track to hit 114,000 units this year in the American market, and they have not cannibalized sales of their big brothers, the Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra. Those big trucks are gaining sales and market share against their competitors. But neither have the Colorado and Canyon put a dent in sales of their main competitor, the Toyota Tacoma. Its sales are up 18.8% this year, Even though there's a new Tacoma coming out, it's not included in these numbers. So that means Toyota is getting a double-digit sales increase out of a 10-year-old truck which has the highest resale of any vehicle in the American market. But Nissan is feeling the heat in the segment. Sales of the Frontier are down 12% so far this year. Speaking of Toyota, if you'd like to see the all-new Prius get unveiled later today, just follow the link in today's transcript. The new hybrid will be shown off in Las Vegas starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Coming up next, a look at the biggest hurdles that could trip up fully autonomous cars. For the people at Dow, 
Racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. On last week's Autoline After Hours, we were joined by Peter Sweatman, the director of the University of Michigan's autonomous test site called M-City. During the discussion, he shared what the biggest obstacles self-driving cars face. I guess the way I look at it is we're going to go through quite a protracted period, where, and maybe forever, where we have a mix of, autom of machines that are, are very intelligent, um, interacting with conventionally driven vehicles. So I think the, the real hurdles are to do with that. Um, they're to do with questions like, you know, that the occupant might have to uh, take over and do something occasionally. Are they really going to be able to purposefully be, have their attention recalled from whatever they might be doing uh, while they're in the vehicle when they don't have to drive and pay attention? So questions like that, but also the interaction between the, the machines and the human-driven vehicles. And I guess the way I put it is that um, human, the human drivers cheat. You know, they speed, they tailgate, uh, they, they go through red lights, um, or at least amber lights. And, and the machines do exactly what they're supposed to do. And so we, we need a situation where all of this is going to work. So we're going to have to be a lot more real about what we expect the whole system to do. You can watch that entire show right now on our website or on our YouTube channel. That wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.